Hey students, let's learn about titrations. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How do we determine the molarity of an unknown acid or base? Well, let's start by learning what a titration is. A titration is just a process to figure out an unknown concentration, also known as molarity. Remember, those two words are interchangeable. And if we're trying to find the concentration of an unknown acid or an unknown base, to do that, we typically need to know a few things. We need to know what a standard solution is, we need a pH indicator, we need to know how neutralization works, and we need to know about mole ratio. So let's get started talking about each of those. Let's start with a standard solution. A standard solution, like you see here on the left side, is a solution where we do know the concentration or we do know the molarity of that solution. And it's always opposite in pH of our unknown. So here, our standard solution, this is a one molar sodium hydroxide solution that's a base. And we use it to compare, try to figure out what our unknown acid solution is. We're trying to figure out what the molarity of this acid is. So standard solutions help us find our unknown molarity of the opposite solution through the process of neutralization. Now, this slide is really important to pay attention to because this is really going to bring it all together. But neutralization, neutralization is just when we take an acid and we base and we react them together to try to get them to neutralize each other. We call that neutralization point the equivalence point, and we can use a pH indicator to help us find this point out. So let me give you an example here. Phenothaline is going to be our pH indicator. So here we have a solution. This is our unknown molarity of an acid. And we're going to put some of that phenothaline in that acid. If you look at the bottom, this is the chart that shows us whether phenothaline is showing an acid, neutral, or a base. Now, in an acid, phenothaline doesn't really do anything. It stays clear. It stays whatever the solution of the acid's color is. Now, we're going to try to get this acid, this unknown molarity, to turn neutral. To do that, we're going to put in a base. And this is our stock solution. We know what the molarity is of our stock solution. So what we do is we put it in this thing up here. It's called a burette. And we open the burette and allow the stock solution to drip into the acid. Now, over time, that phenothaline, when the two mix, will eventually reach a neutralization point. We call this the equivalence point, and it's a very faint pink. And at this point, we've reached an acid-base reaction, where the acid and the base, they neutralize each other and create an, uh, a salt and water. Now, unfortunately, if we don't stop this reaction from happening, we might go a little bit too far and have to start over. But the point is to try to reach that neutralization point. Now, this is what a titration typically looks like in real life. It's a little bit tedious to do, but you can see over time, we're able to find that neutralization or that equivalence point using a titration. Now, all of this is done in order to find parts of this equation. So this is a titration equation or titration formula. This is found on your periodic table on the back, but let me explain all the different parts you need to know. There's kind of three major things. Notice these sections in green. These are the pieces that we're going to be able to find during a titration. So at the very beginning of a titration, we usually put an unknown solution inside a flask with a pH indicator. That's right over here, the volume of an unknown use. So typically we measure and record the volume of that unknown that we're going to start with. Then what we do is we pull out a burette, that's just this tool here on top, and that's going to hold our stock solution, the solution that we do know the concentration of. So over here we're going to write the concentration or the molarity of that stock solution. Then we perform a titration and we allow that concentrated, that the solution that we do know the concentration of, and we put it in our unknown concentration until we reach that equivalence point, And then we stop the reaction from happening. That lets us know exactly how much volume that we used of that standard solution. So notice that the volume went down to the standard solution. This tool up here, the burette, will tell us the volume that we used to reach that equivalence point or to reach that neutralization. Now, down here, you notice that we have these other two numbers, NS and NU. Well, these stand for the number of moles of each of the substances. And we find these using the equation. We actually have to write out 
a reaction equation between the acid and the base. And we use the coefficients from that equation to be able to figure out what these numbers are at the bottom. So these are called the mole ratios or the coefficients of the standard and the coefficients of the unknown. And I'll talk about this in the next slide as well. And finally, ultimately, this is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out the molarity of our unknown using this equation. So we just plug everything in, we simplify stuff, we do a little division, and we're finally figured it out. So again, the green things are found during a titration. The blue things, we would have to write out a reaction equation to figure out those coefficients. And our final answer is this red thing right here. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit more about the mole ratios and give you an example. Let's say we had a reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide. Notice when we write this equation and balance it, we're able to determine the mole ratio between the two. So here, this is one mole of acid and two moles of base. Those are those two numbers that we would use at the bottom of that equation, the mole ratios or the coefficients. What this is basically saying is, is in order for these two to neutralize, they have to be in a one acid to two base mole ratio for this specific reaction. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can solve one of the problems ourselves. Now, this these are the steps that I like to take, um, and you can basically use these steps whether performing a titration in real life or if you're just trying to solve a titration problem that's written out for you. So let's take a look at one of those titration problems right here. It says, determine the unknown concentration of hydrochloric acid of 25 milliliters of a three molar sodium hydroxide stock solution were needed to bring 10 milliliters of the acid to their equivalence point. The first thing I like to do is write down a chemical reaction equation. We're going to need this mole ratios later. So in order to write this equation out, I write it out like this, and I balance it using these coefficients. Now, I only need the coefficients for the acid and the base up here, which I'll use in my end formula. You'll see in a moment. The next thing I do is I perform a titration. I here at part two, you can see the steps that I take. I start with the unknown concentration. That's 10 milliliters. And so I write that down. That's how much of the volume of unknown that we're going to start with. I write down the stock solution molarity. So how much the molarity or the concentration of the stock solution we start with. And then after performing the titration and reaching the equivalence point, we try to figure out how much of that stock solution we needed to use in order to reach the equivalence point of neutralization. And those are usually listed out in the example problem or the problem if this is a, a word problem that we have to solve as well. So now what we need to do is plug in all of these values into those two equations. So here we have the standard solution and the unknown solution. And I'm gonna take the standard solution and plug those values in, the molarity or the concentration of the standard times the volume of the standard that we used in order to neutralize the problem. And then we divide it by the mole ratio and we got it up here. There's a one as a coefficient for our sodium hydroxide, which is our standard solution. Next, I plug in the values, or at least the values that I know of our unknown solution. We started with a volume of 10 milliliters, so that goes there, and our mole ratio is 1, and we can simplify all of this. So if I know that this whole side is equal to this whole side, I can plug and chug those values into a calculator, do a little division, and end up with the final molarity. So in this solution, the molarity of our unknown acid turns out to be 7.5 molar. All right, let's end with a student practice. Pause the video and see if you can solve this one yourself. Determine the unknown concentration of sulfuric acid if 25 milliliters of a one molar sodium hydroxide stock solution were needed to bring 20 milliliters of the acid to their equivalence point. All right, did you figure it out? I hope you paused it and tried it yourself, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's start by seeing what we have. Well, I see that sodium hydroxide, I know a lot about. I have 25 milliliters and one molar. This is our stock solution. It even says so. But even if it didn't, I notice I know a lot of information and I know the molarity, so I can plug that into the stock solution side. Next, I see that I have 20 milliliters of the acid, and it's specifically sulfuric acid. So I'm going to plug that into our unknown side because we're trying to determine the concentration of the acid. Now, I need to figure out what these n values here are at the bottom. Those are the coefficients of a chemical reaction equation. So I'm going to have to write this equation out. Here is the equation 
that's unbalanced. Now I need to go ahead and balance this equation. So I'm going to add a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide, a 2 in front of water, and everything else is just going to be a 1. So these are our ratios, our mole ratio of the, of the base to the acid. So I'm going to put the base coefficient down here because that's our stock solution. And I'm going to put the acid coefficient over here because that is our unknown solution. Now the rest is just simplification and a little bit of division, and we'll solve for the actual answer. So the molarity of our unknown acid is 0.625 molar. That's the end of our notes. Take a moment, review and highlight key terms. If you have any questions, write them down and seek answers to them and summarize the essential question. Good luck.